with a quick show of hands can i know how many of you uh, are running your business which is more than a couple of years old okay thank you very much i see some very excited men who are at the back you're free to raise your hand don't worry about that we like to keep this as participative so don't worry can i also know that how many of you had to pivot your business after the pandemic where you had to course correct and you had to change so not that many but i can see slowly the hands are coming across so the reason why i th thank you very much for participating in that the reason why i thought i'll start with this is because it's very important for us to uh, understand who we are really talking to all of us here are established entrepreneurs uh, i started my company in the year 2018 we run a we i, I run a company called ca expert we provide outsourced accounting solutions to small businesses the reason we why we started the compliance company was only because there was so much of information asymmetry as a woman leader because we never understood our numbers it was understood that my husband or my brother will go for a meeting with a chartered accountant and not me and that's the reason why i felt that when i went for my website development we were told that why don't we make your website pink so the color palette was decided it was known that the my husband will cut the check everything was pre decided for me i just had to show up as a director and look pretty and i think that's the reason why i think all of us sitting here in this on this stage here and all of you will have certain stories like that instead of me introducing my panel i thought that let me make it democratic and leave it to all of you uh, or i mean all of them to actually introduce themselves i'll begin with aisha and i'm going to ask each one of you a question answer the question and then also uh, give us a line of your introduction i aisha tell me how you think what is the journey of the woman entrepreneur who's already become a woman entrepreneur they're all here you know they've been running their businesses they're all getting awards how do you think that person takes a step ahead and becomes a leader that transition that happens and stays to become a leader to sustain as a leader is a challenging is a challenging task So how does one do that what did you do who are you and what is it that you do there's so many questions in just one question <laughs> yeah go ahead but thank you so much yashoda and thanks very much uh, it's a pleasure to be here this evening and share my thoughts about this topic which i'm extremely passionate about and i'm sure everyone sitting here in the room is extremely passionate about women empowerment women leadership women entrepreneurship whatever we may like to call i'm aisha choudhury and i would like to begin by saying that when i was growing up i was a bookworm an introvert i sort of didn't really engage in a lot of co curricular activity physical activity but you know what i realized is that in the last 10 years is when i really started to integrate a lot a different facets of life into my existence and my entrepreneurial journey started about 10 years ago before startups actually became a fashionable household term you know it's only in the last 7 years everybody wants to be a co-founder because it's cool it's fashionable the pm is talking about it and what not but i think when i started up people were really wanting to ask me oh so it seems like you don't have with anything to do in life and maybe that's why you're really starting up a company so i think i bring this out really because what is very important for all of us to realize is that back then and still today as women entrepreneurs we continue to face internal and external barriers in our journey and i faced also a lot of them i started in the area of medical technologies which again because it's hardcore technology it was supposed to be a man's space so people used to make fun of me you know that oh you're a woman co-founder and you're trying to work on technology and you're trying to raise a lot of money from private investors government grants how do you think it's going to really happen but i think what was really important is that since we believed in ourselves we were trying to solve a compelling need which was essentially about saving newborn babies that's how the mission really led us and we continue to grow and of course after a few years we licensed out our technology to one of india's largest manufacturer so that they could really take it to a scale not just within india but beyond india because that's what their forte was we were more of innovators entrepreneurs but not really ones who can make a lot of money and impact outside india as well so i think that's the kind of paths that i took and when you talk about leadership i think it's very important for us to realize who is a leader what often troubles me is this very westernized concept of leadership that you know you're a leader only if you're 
running a large organization as a head or as a CEO. But I think what I loved was that every woman is an entrepreneur. Similarly, what about family leadership, self-leadership, community leadership? I think all these aspects are also part of the concept of leadership. So I think as part of an individual, as part of the WEP team working at Niti Ayo, we're all extremely passionate about really expanding this definition, concept of leadership. We really need to add new dimensions to what leadership is all about, because especially in India, women always do not get a formal authority, but they still continue to be great leaders. So I think that is very, very important, and that is one of our common missions through the WEP also that we're trying to say, how do we really empower women entrepreneurs like the ones sitting here to really emerge as leaders from India for the world? So I think that's where we have to focus that, yes, you want to start as an entrepreneur, but you also want to be able to inspire people at work, in community, in your family, and continue to emerge as leadership, as, as great leaders. So I think leadership is not, like I said, just about organization. It's about really understanding who you are as an individual, how you want to inspire people around you, and how you really want to create an impact. So I think that's where I pause. There's lots to say, but I think that's for now. Thank no, you. No, I think th I think those are va very valid points and a great segue to my next question, which is for Divya. Divya, in 2023, I know you're running a, a, a skilling uh, app. Tell us a little bit about that and tell us what skills are relevant for a leader, for a woman entrepreneur in 2023. Not what was relevant but what is relevant today? And don't talk about only from those people who started a company. I see there are a lot of students here who started off. So if there were some young people who you had to address, what were those skills that you would say, you would say are critical for? Uh, thank you so much, Yashodra and uh, Aisha. Um, so first of all, I think I'd like to start by a huge congratulations uh, you know, to the Jagran Media Group for actually organizing this. Um, you know, saying women entrepreneurs, and of course, a huge round of applause for the amazing women entrepreneurs who are here today. And, uh, and you know, I, I think you spoke about this, Mekha, is just the fact that you are here and just the fact that you're getting acknowledged. I think that's what we need to start off with, that women entrepreneurs themselves are special. Um, so I'm Divya Jain. I was just in, um, I was doing a program at the Bos in Boston. This is an OPM program at the Harvard University. It's 180 business owners from across the world. So there were 180 people from 60 countries. Sat countries, there were 180 people from 60 less than 10% of the cohort was women. There were 15 girls. I was in a classroom, we were living, we had living groups, I was living in an apartment. Uh, there were seven men, one was from uh, Mexico, Uruguay, uh, Brazil, Singapore, and I was, I, I freaked out, but I was literally the only woman uh, in that group. And the fact of the matter is, what we do is hard. It's not easy to be a woman entrepreneur, irrespective of what the narrative is so far, and can we take a moment to just acknowledge that. There are studies that have been done. Uh, you know, one of our professors, Professor Boris, did a study and he said it is seven times harder. It is seven times harder for a woman to be in a leadership position or to run a business. So just the fact you guys are here, take a bow. Each one of you who raised your hand and said that I'm running a business, please understand you're doing something incredibly special. And Her Zindagi, this platform, and also WEP, these are platforms that are acknowledging it, and these are resources so that we can try and make it not as hard. What is WEP? WEP is an aggregating platform. It is a platform we're trying to bring together resources. We're trying to get together people to support these amazing women entrepreneurs who unfortunately today are a minority, right? Aisha would have a really hard time raising money because the first question would be, are you getting married? When do you plan to have kids, right? 
I mean, I'm sorry, sir, but did you get that question when you go for a fundraise? No, you don't. So I think as women, we acknowledge that it's harder for us to be entrepreneurs, but we go ahead and do it any which ways. And, and these are platforms that are coming together to bring the right resources together to enable that. And WEP is just an aggregation platform, which uh, we're really grateful because you actually have one of the highest authority of the Niti Aayog and the government of India recognizes that. Uh, and they want to make a place where entrepreneurs can come together, access resources, uh, and more than that, have a community. Have a community where each one of us can see each other and say, you know what? She did it, so maybe so can I. And you know, role models that Womenpreneur Awards will create also does that for each one of us. Uh, for me, I'm Divya. I've been running an I've been running a skilling company. Uh, we've been doing skill development for young girls and boys. And during COVID, we pivoted to a platform called Seco. It's an online platform which again is looking at giving the relevant skill sets. Uh, which are more relevant in today's digital world. Um, and, and truly, I think uh, here again, I'll try, try and say that entrepreneurs, uh, and there's always been nurture versus nature. Are entrepreneurs made or created? And I think a lot of us are excited to be this, but there's a lot of skilling uh, and resources that we can provide as an ecosystem to make that happen. Uh, so of course, soft skills like critical thinking, uh, like creating a team, being a leader, but also hard skills. Uh, you know, uh, Mika spoke about it in terms of, you know, creating videos, digital marketing. So having the right uh, hard skills, which is di digital skills, uh, financial literacy, uh, you know, access to market, understanding these skills are incredibly important. Uh, and I think as entrepreneurs, we all need to invest in ourselves, uh, to skill ourselves, uh, in our teams, and more than anything, our vision. You know, I think often we are, we are we're inspired by the need that we see around, but I think in all of us, we have the ability and vision to scale, to make that into a larger impact. Uh, and I do hope that all of us can come together, pool our resources together and encourage and motivate each other to create a larger vision and a, you know, a vision that's greater than all of us. Well said, absolutely. I think that all of us are here and the WEP platform does exactly that. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit. But before that, my next panel is Shivani Malik. Shivani, your question that I have for you is that a few of them raised their hands saying that they had to pivot their business after the pandemic. What was it for you to run one of India's largest uh, luxury leather goods? And how did COVID impact you? And what is that one... Um, lesson or one piece of advice that you could give them from a marketing standpoint to all the women entrepreneurs that are here when they're faced with a situation like this. Thank you, Yashu. Um, good evening, everyone. I would like to start by telling you a small little story of how I started. I uh, basically finished my master's and got involved um, and straight away got married and got involved in this business, which I thought I'm going to give my best shot. Um, when I joined the business, Da Milano basically was just a two-store concept. It wasn't even a brand. It was just a two-store concept. And uh, there was one store in CP and the other one in South X. Um, that's when I sat down with my husband. We made, we thought, you know, this is going to be our first child and we'll bring it up. We'll create, we'll, we didn't know what, what brand, what a, creating a brand exactly means, but we thought we'll try and have a chain of uh, stores uh, that, you know, because we thought we wanted to make a bigger impact. So we decided to uh, start expanding and Luckily, the retail market was also like growing at that point. So we started taking spaces in the malls and we started um, having, uh, you know, getting more stores for Da Milano. Now, when we started the business 15 years ago to what it is today, there is absolutely actually no comparison to how we ran the business then to how we run the business now. So my first advice comes to, you know, is that you know you need to understand that times are always going to be changing. So one needs to be prepared to change with the changing times. Um, I actually took up the task of marketing and e-commerce, both of which haven't stayed you know, stagnant. So the only thing that was constant was change. 
and it's constantly changing. COVID was, COVID actually was very, very surprising. Like, because we did it, we had, no one was actually prepared. So while everyone thought that it's just, this is the end, it was actually a beginning for most of the businesses. And I'm sure a lot of people in the audience also came up with a lot of new ideas. Uh, for us, in our business, we realized how important digital marketing is, how important online presence is. So while I am sitting here and like literally telling you about my business, each day constantly, like you're learning so much. So even for me, even while I am doing the business, and while Divya was talking about skilling and how you have to keep upskilling, you know, you have to keep learning. Just yesterday, I got a call for a Metaverse store and I was like, I need to learn more. So the other constant thing that is that you have to keep learning to be able to grow a business. And I think a platform like WEP is, it's, it's that place where it really helps. So, you know, it's not just for startups, it's for all sorts of entrepreneurs, including me, Divya, Aisha, and I think Yashodra. It's at all levels of businesses where you need whatever, wherever you're getting stuck, I think uh, it's, it's, it comes right there to help you. This has been, I have been associated with WEP ever since its inception, and it's a cause very, very close to my heart. So while business gives me a high, my brand is out there, it's, it's the best thing we've created, it's come out well. Giving back to the society was something exact, it was something really close to my heart. And that's why I decided to jo like, you know, hold hands with WEP and bring out the message out there to everyone. My message right now is also to please have a look at the, the website, try and register on it and get help wherever you're getting stuck. Because this is what's going to take you to the next level. It's going, it takes people like us also who have sort of come a little um, further than the startups. So it is for everyone out there. It's going to just add. It's just going to add to you. And it's my request to at least have a look at it once. So that you, you're, under, you're able to understand, you're able to get, gain more and more and take your business to the next level. Thank you. Thank you, Shivani. And I think that, you know, to address the elephant in the room that what is WEP and I wanted this uh, context setting to be done first before we actually talk about WEP because otherwise it would have been lost in an introduction. The Women Entrepreneurship Platform or WEP is an enabling platform launched as a PPP, which is a public private partnership where private stakeholders are collaborating with the public entities to provide a range of resources, mentorship, networking opportunities to entrepreneurs that are women. It's a platform that was started in under Niti Ayo and it continues to do so. The platform aims to foster a more inclusive and supportive entrepreneurial ecosystem in India, offering a collaborative space for women to access the support that they need and to grow their business. Recently, at the Empower 20 uh, inception meeting, which was held in Agra, which is one of the tracks of the G20 for which our country is holding the presidency, WEP was offered to G G20 countries, signaling the potential for a multilateral impact beyond India. So here is the platform that is there available to all of us where you can go sign up and you can instantly be connected to the G20 countries. and. God knows, get advice, uh, mentorship, resources, which is going to be multi-layered and multi-dimensional. WEP is also launched as this platform has been its 3.0 version. It's the third version that has been, and it's a radical change in terms of the usability. And it has close to about 30,000 members that benefit from additional offerings, but also create a wider opportunity for thousands of women entrepreneurs to be a part of this movement. And this brings me back to what Shivani was saying that, you know, it is a platform that helps you get that elevator back down for the others to climb up. As an enabling platform, WEP is built on three pillars, Ichha Shakti, Gyan Shakti and Karma Shakti. Motivating aspiring entrepreneurs to start their businesses, providing knowledge and ecosystem support to women entrepreneurs to foster in entrepreneurship for those who are in the middle and providing hands-on support to entrepreneurs in setting and scaling up their businesses for those who are in the growth phase. I would urge all of you to please visit the website wep.gov.in and do register yourself so that we can see more of your faces at our events when we do so in the near future. 
coming back to the questions that we had laid out and taking pointers from what the audience did kind of give us and some of your introductions. Aisha, I wanted to understand from you that since you are now heading research, uh, the vertical of research in the w uh, WEP uh, platform, what would you think are the impediments to conducting research? What is it that as an entrepreneur, when I'm filling out a survey or being part of that evidence creation, what is it that I can do better to help you do uh, a better job at data collection, data uh, binding, and also evidence, uh, I mean, just data creation in general, so that we can use that data to solve uh, greater pain points. Sure, thank you. And I think what I'll also do is provide a little more context to WEP because I was working at Niti Aayog when all of this got started. You, Some of you may remember India hosted the Global Entrepreneurship Summit, GES, back in 2017 in November. And it was at that summit where it was announced you know, that why can't we do something which is focused for women in entrepreneurship. So it was announced that yes, the government through Niti Aayog will do something in that. And you won't believe that in the next three months, around March, the Women's Day, the platform was launched. I highlight this because it just demonstrate the, demonstrates the kind of commitment, not just government, but a lot of partners also brought to the table that yes, now is the time for women to really go into the entrepreneurial journey and become leaders. So I think that was very important also to mention. And yes, since then, three versions have been launched and I think it's been a very, very iterative process where we get a sense of what are the needs in the market in for the users who are the women entrepreneurs and then we keep revising. And I think what we realized over the last few months was that there's a lot of talk about what needs to change in India. But when we go to the government or we go to private partners and say that this needs to change, everybody will ask, why do you think this will work and something else will not work? And I think that's where we realize that what we really need is some data, some evidence to demonstrate that yes, these are some kind of policy changes that we need within India to further enable women entrepreneurship. These are some programs that we really need to test, demonstrate on field, with some organizations in various states to be able to say that, yes, this is what works. So I think in general, if you look at the country, we don't have a lot of data in terms of which kind of women entrepreneurs are successful. What is it that really enables them? And when I say enabling, it's again, both to be able to address the internal barriers as well as the external barriers. Last five, seven years after, of course, Startup India was launched, there was a lot of emphasis on, you know, external barriers. We have to be able to provide schemes, programs, policies, everything. But what about internal barriers again? So I think as a research innovation policy arm of WEP, we are really looking forward to be able to also understand that if some women entrepreneurs have overcome those internal barriers, what are those barriers? Can we use some of the learnings from those people and let's say create some policies or some frameworks which can then enable masses to really start the journey of entrepreneurship. I think right now the number is low because it's a lot about, okay, what's the environment and what is my internal strength? But if the environment is improving, can we also enable more and more women to develop that internal strength to take up that job of being an entrepreneur? So I think Research and innovation is all going to be about creating this data for India that yes, this is what enables, empowers women. In fact, I'll also share one specific research study that we are doing, which may seem a little intriguing. The moment I say the word genetics, a lot of people come to me. Why do you want to really understand what kind of genes do women entrepreneurs have? But I think that's also we're doing because like it was also mentioned that the nurture and the nature, both go hand in hand. So yes, there the genes do play some role in the kind of behavior we demonstrate as individuals. So there's no harm in understanding, you know, that, okay, are there some genes which are unique to entrepreneurs or no? Now, what are the results and how do we want to leverage that is something which we will discuss later on. But I think what I will really want to also mention here that as women entrepreneurs, what you can really contribute is to tell us what are the areas where we need more research, where we need more data. And as we will keep launching, rolling out these studies, it would be nice to get your inputs also. If you participate in these studies, you will tell us that 
how you enabled empowered yourself to become an entrepreneur and then how we can use those learnings to empower more women to actually become entrepreneurs so i think it's essentially just about learning from people who have done in the field collecting that as an evidence then going and you know knocking to the government that this is what needs to change telling the private organizations this is what needs to change and then of course creating an enabling ecosystem where not just one out of 10 but maybe one out of two women want to become an entrepreneur sometime in the future so that's our goal i would say thanks no i think I, the the better you are at identifying a pain point higher your chances of solving that person's problem is so i think that we must put in that effort to identify the pain points of each of the entrepreneurs this question is actually for both divya and shivani and for anybody else who wants to talk about their story please raise your hands it's everybody's talking about gender parity divya also kind of mentioned uh, about her classroom gender parity where there were eight women leaders out of 100 uh, or I'm, i'm sorry i don't remember the other number but more important than gender parity which is equal number of men and women what's important is gender inclusivity how many women in your organizations are you actually giving a serious pathway to become a leader so this question is to both shivani and divya what do you think of gender inclusivity today you have women working in your organizations do they get a chance to come after they maybe have had a baby taken a maternity leave or got married what do they put on the resume how are the pol- the policies in your organization making sure that somebody can have an act too and not be ashamed about it and not be worried about an empty slot in their resume and need to feel the need that you know they have to worry so i'll have both of you uh, take this up okay so in my 15 years of work experience i have noticed especially for a brand like ours women make better leaders now i, I we were having this discussion before the panel as well it's it's maybe because women in general are more compassionate they understand they understand how their team works they're they're more uh, i mean they understand the feelings of empathetic. they're more empathetic is the right word yeah so for us for and for especially for da milano as well we have we we actually uh, have way more women working for us than men and uh, consciously we hire more women and that actually has the working environment is actually so much better i feel because of that uh, having said that uh, i think when there are lots of women in the workplace automatically systems are put in place to support each other so i mean automatically policies come up which because see every woman has to go through that biological cycle they have to get you know when they get get married they have to have a child etc i mean i think we've we've learned it as as we've grown we've learned it we've understood that but because we appreciate those those workers so much because we know we can't i mean brands are made with people for so for us at least in our organization i think um people uh um, people who we work with are very 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 important for us we we lay a lot of emphasis on training we spend a lot of time motivating our employees so we understand when when there's a need that they need to go for a long break we as women did so i had to take a, a long break when my first child was born it was very hard to get back so i understand i understand that as a lo- leader myself and i try and push it to the lowest level also because we focus so much on training and we we invest in our people automatically policies are made in such a way and it's great that you know now companies at large are understanding the importance of women in organizations importance of women in leadership positions because it just makes the working environment so much better and i hope more and more government policies also keep coming in place where women are supported and so that it's easier for women to come back stronger and you know like if you automatically if you're investing in something you will make sure that you make space for it once it's ready to come back so i think i think it's important to keep training your people to keep motivating them and build whatever you're building together as a team i think we at damilano we do that uh, we've uh, we we have a beautiful team of women leaders both like our top positions are all f- full of women and it's just it's just a very very happy working environment thank you 
Thank you, Shivani. I loved your stories. Um, so two stories, and, and that's it for me. Um, uh, so my, we are a family in logistics. My father-in-law started a company in logistics. It's called Safe Express. Um, when I got married and, um, you know, I joined the business and I walked in and I said, Chalo, I have to go to office. I have to walk into the warehouse. Uh, my mother-in-law had never been allowed uh, to go to office, right? Because logistics, trucking, ladkiyon ki jaga nahi hai. So that was basically the, you know, and, and she was just like, you know, but for the past 30 years, I to kabhi gai nahi. But that was, I think, the mindset. And I, I remember when I first walked in, people were a little bit like taken aback. Uh, there were truck drivers and, you know, there's someone following me around, piche piche ki pata nahi madam ko kya ho jayega. Uh, but I think the exciting thing was that because madam was there, everyone started behaving themselves. Um, and, and, you know, we actually started, I started my training company where we've been training men and women. And we've created warehouses. And this is for Ecom Express. We had 180 women who we train. And the entire warehouse today in Nagpur is run by women. This warehouse is one of the best performing warehouses of Ecom, uh, of Ecom Express. It has 80% more productivity than the other warehouses. Right? The women don't take breaks. Uh, there is much lesser attrition. And, you know, overall, it's a much better working culture. So, you know, when you put women in the workplace, statistics, facts show you that the working environment per se increases. The second thing is about being a mother or, you know, having a child. Having a child is directly proportional to your years of working, right? Uh, you know, your, 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 your clock stops at 40. You need to get everything done. And that's exactly the time that you need to build up your business. Uh, and how do you manage that? And at some point, this conversation needs to be okay. It needs to be okay for us to have conversations like this. Do we really want maternity leave? I'm sorry, but I'm not leaving my business for six months, you know, especially a new startup. But there's a policy which says that, hey, we're giving you maternity, paternity leave. How many people are actually using that? We're not going to get the right answers till we have women, till we have you guys, till we have us in leadership, in positions, talking about it. I was pregnant with my son. It was nine months, 10 days when I inaugurated this um, school in uh, Vigyan Bhavan. And everyone was very nice to me because they were like, oh my God, her baby will come anytime. So I got a lot more done just because I was having a baby. But we are powerful. We are strong. And we need to own that, accept that, and talk about it. So even at WEP, uh, you know, come, you know what Aisha is saying, talk to the surveys in skilling. Talk about your needs in terms of mentorship. I mean, not just decide. Women need mentors. So come on board. Uh, find mentors for yourself and also give back. As entrepreneurs, you are role models. So we would love to have you on platform, not just to consume, but to give. So contribute in terms of reach out to us, tell us how you'd like to be a part of this. Uh, we'd love to have your resources on board, the kind of markets that you want to reach out to. Uh, so, you know, one platform, one voice. And if we guys can all make a voice for this, I'm sure this is the change that we need. I don't think there could have been a better ending to this uh, panel than those comments, uh, Divya. And I think that for us to understand how we work, the only way that that can happen is if all of us work together as a community and understand that, you know, our problems are a shared problems and the solution also is going to come from one of us. I'd like to thank all of you here and all of you there sitting here patiently listening uh, to us. And as uh, Divya, Aisha, and Shivani have reiterated, we'd request you to please join in on this platform. It's a simple sign up. It's wep.gov.in. It's an initiative run by Niti Aayog. And as I said, it's a PPP model. We're looking for your support of your time, of your experiences, of your learning. Whatever you can give to a farmer who's sitting in Odisha, who's growing turmeric, which has got the highest content of curcumin. And the only reason she can't sell it is because there is no logistics partner willing to transport her curcumin 
from Bhuvaneshwar to the various stores here in Delhi or Mumbai or Hyderabad, that's no reason enough for her to not be able to do that business. So women entrepreneurs are all those women, all those women entrepreneurs who we touch, who are there in tier three, tier four cities, who don't know how to open a bank account, who don't even have a bank sometimes in their districts. Those are the people you need to touch. That's where the change is going to come from. So urging all of you to come forward and thank you very, very much. Her Zindagi, Priyanka Megha for this opportunity. We truly feel uh, blessed that we, be, we were able to do this. Thank you.